Hi, this is Kelly Kutzinger with Cleanly Consumed and Kelly Kutzinger Coaching. My YouTube channel is here to provide you with tips and resources and also introduce you to practitioners that have therapies that you might have not heard about. Not only do their practices offer services through in-person, but also virtual, which is great, especially right now during this pandemic. So today I get the opportunity to talk to Danielle and Brian Mitchell about the four areas of health that their practice focuses on. So let's go ahead and get started. Keep in mind that I will have some notes and I will have some links on how to contact them and get started some resources that they suggest down in the description thanks so much guys and i hope you enjoy hi guys this is kelly kutzinger with cleanly consumed and kelly kutzinger coaching and i'm so excited today because we have the opportunity to talk to danielle and brian mitchell with the cognizant group so i've known danielle often you know we've been able to um, talk about referring clients to you for a while and I've heard really great things um, just from people that I've met that knew you and knew your work and you know you have a really great reputation and a great bedside manner and um, I'm so excited to learn more about this um, new therapy that you're going to be able to introduce to everyone and be able I can share that with others and because my whole thought is that unless you know of a therapy or um, a, some, you know, a therapy or support that you can give, then you, it can't help you if you don't know about it. So I'm excited to learn more. So let's just go ahead and dig in and um, start by telling me a little bit about your practice. And we know in the functional medicine world that Functional medicine practitioners always have a driven passion from either a personal experience, a personal health journey, or from someone that they love and their family or their friends. So let's go ahead and get started with a little bit about your practice and then what got you started. Sure. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about Cognizant. Maybe Brian can tell you about our personal story, how we kind of got there. Um, when we were starting Cognizant, you know, the Cognizant group, even thinking about what does Cognizance mean to raise awareness. I'm just trying to kind of figure out what is our, our drive and passion going to be. And it, it became pretty clear to us that the idea was to help everybody, everybody function beyond their current capabilities. And so for us, that looks like four different core areas. Mm -hmm. um, one, ABM neuro movement. Two, functional nutrition. Three, comprehensive counseling. And then the fourth is functional medicine health coaching. So that, that's kind of the four different areas of expertise that we focus on. And Brian can tell you more about how we got into that. And then so my side of it is the neuro movement side of it. And together we came to that through our son, who when he was born, we found out he had multiple brain abnormalities. And they, for the most part, uh, don't really have anything for you until symptoms arise. And then they have things that they do uh, traditionally through for different symptoms and things like that. But about three months in, we found out um, from someone we, that we teleconsult with in California about neuromovement. And so we had our son starting at three months um, because neuromovement seeks to upgrade the brain in its uh, function, which then correlates with all the systems, obviously. Of the person and so you see these developmental things come about and it's so it's not so much a wait and see what goes wrong and let's see if we can do something about it but let's let's give the person the greatest possibilities they could possibly have in order to hopefully avoid a lot of those things as well and, and in addition to seeking to see if we can correct some of the things that come about along the way so yeah so Tillian's story for us was this embodiment of, of what we had thought would always be a good idea, but my background is a dietitian. I've been working as a dietitian for almost 15 years in functional nutrition and then in counseling, my second licensure. And then we had him, and it was this amazing opportunity. I mean, not that we experiment on our son, but it was an amazing opportunity to really live out what we've been teaching families right. all along other families. And for us to see with this this child, you know, we'd had a neurotypical child before him. Right. And so to see with him how we could really support his system um, using nutrition and he's, you know, in counseling and then also using neuro movement. So he's been, he's been a really fun embodiment of the work that we do and hope to do with other families too. Oh, well, I remember when I met you, it was, I believe, at a microbiome gut restoration oh, event and you had right. your third in your tummy. <laughs> yes. 
just was so fascinating talking to you there. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, how does the health of, well, I just brought up the gut, but how does the health of the gut um, affect like support and healing and, and absorption of nutrients and how important is um, gut health? And how sure. do you address that? Yeah, I mean, I think starting backwards, if you talk with someone who um, suffers from any sort of a mental illness, you know, depression or anxiety, if you talk with families who have, you know, children with special needs, um, maybe maybe kids who have, you know, some sort of autism spectrum disorder, you'll hear a lot of families or the individuals themselves talk about the dysfunction that they experience in their gut. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, ancient, ancient physicians would even say that the gut is known as the second brain. There's a connection between the brain and the gut, particularly through the vagus nerve. And so when we see dysfunction happening in the brain or with neurotransmitters, not all the time, but likely, um, more often than not, we can connect those things with dysfunction going on in the gut, whether that is from motility issues, from right. you know, things not passing through as quickly, or if it's from a, a microbiome standpoint. Right. Um, you know, not seeing appropriate growth of positive or probiotic bacteria and seeing overgrowth of dysfunctional bacteria. So I think, you know, it may sound overkill to say that if everything, um, the gut is not obviously going to heal it. When we heal the gut, we're not going to heal everything, but I think it's right. it's really a, um, a place to core. start. The foundation is the core of where we've got to start. Exactly. Well, when um, life first begins, you have, you know, the heartbeat, but you have the gut and the brain, and right. they communicate. And so right. I was um, just wanting to bring that up because I know that you can address that nutritionally with your four parts of your practice and then target that and support the body while you're supporting the neuro movement and everything else that you do. So, yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely one of our biggest hopes is that as you know one practice able to kind of serve four different purposes right. that we don't have to have someone come into us and right. say well, look we have this one option for you if you don't want to do it so we can't help you but it's really kind of meeting the person where they are right and that we like to think about is how do we help the person co-create a plan with us instead of us being the experts you know giving that plan how do they come in whether it's starting with the get or starting with neuro movement or starting with some counseling you know just to support the family that's wonderful because I know some people that have been on health journeys for so long. I have referred some out to practitioners that have a good understanding of functional medicine. It's something that hopefully that's growing because that can be hard for other people to find uh, counseling that has a, a good understanding of finding root cause issues for something that's been long-term, whether it be an injury or, or Lyme or something that's been long-term growing. So I love that you offer counseling too. So that's wonderful. Um, what are your thoughts on alleviating as many toxins from everyday sources to help facilitate and support healing? I'll say it very simply. Right. <laughs> if I'm able to help clients do so to eliminate toxins, you know, the word detox is so tricky because it means so many different things to different people. But I always would prefer to help clients appropriately detoxify um, as long as that's not adding to their anxiety. Right. So we right. kind of have to weigh out how and. Um, how clean, if you will, you know, how much can you remove the body burden in your lifestyle right. without creating a burden on either relationships or your finances. So I think as long as we can weigh out that balance, again, it's, it's so important to create that foundation of a cleaner system, but we have to, I think, be cautious in making sure that we're not you know, eliminating important social relationships or creating a burden on people's finances and doing so, but I do think it's vital. We're laughing because we get it. Like we understand, you know, so um, you have some people that go cold turkey and just want to do everything. I'm like, let's take baby steps. But again, that is why like your four pillars of your practice, it, it's good to have the counseling background to guide people and encourage them and the coaching side to make them successful because what clean, Removing toxins looks like one to one person is different than another. And then detoxing is, is, is different, like what we were saying. And I always say, do not try a detox alone without a practitioner. Um, if you have, a, especially if you have, a, if you have a diagnosed underlying health condition. So 
that would also that would also be you. <laughs> okay, so um, in in our family, we have a relationship with sleep apnea, and I have had my eyes opened a lot to small airways and um, what how that affects focus and the brain and um, growth and a lot of different things. So how would your practice um, support someone that has had sleep apnea, but it's getting treatment either like through an oral appliance or um, a, a, a CPAP machine, which I know no one likes those, but how would your, <coughs> I'm trying not to cough, how would your practice be able to support that? And I'm taking a lot of these questions up at the beginning. I think Brian's going to focus a lot on the neuro movement piece and some of our specific clientele. Um, the, the sleep apnea, you, you mentioned part of it. I think it's so important that functional medicine practitioners, whether that's me as a health coach or a counselor or a dietitian or Brian as a neuro movement professional, um, to make sure that we are coordinating care with people's other specialties. Right. So for me, a big thing is, right, knowing who to refer people back to for sleep studies, really supporting someone in getting a better fit of a CPAP machine. You know, that's the number one reason people don't use their CPAP machines is right. so annoying and cumbersome. And so I've, I've picked up the phone and actually called some physicians and just advocated on behalf of that client if we have a release signed. Um, so the other thing that I think is, is doing a lot of psychoeducation for people understanding that sometimes even depression, right, that may feel circumstantial or it may feel nutrient driven can really be just from someone's sleep suffer, suffering right. or, or even their sleep hygiene. And right. so doing a little validation of just the effects of sleep apnea, it's not just hey, you might gain weight or you know, it's, it's not good that you're not breathing in the middle of the night. I think really it's kind of painting a big picture that some of the big things that people suffer from um, can really be alleviated once we get the apnea taken care of, can, you know, including weight loss or healthy weight maintenance, um, anxiety, depression, some of those things. Heart risk. Yeah. And even you know, the way this works together so often, like I just, I'm just thinking out loud now, the way we're talking about the sleep apnea, and different sleep issues is like, I'm thinking of two different clients because one of the um, secondary benefits, if you call it a secondary benefit with the neuro movement, mm -hmm. um, it could, I said, we say secondary because usually somebody comes to us for something else, mm -hmm. but their sleep quality improves so much. And I've had a client or multiple clients like this is they come to me for like an injury or like something like that. Their sleep quality improves so much that they keep coming because they've never slept that well before. Um, or I've had someone who chronically could not fall asleep right. and they just That's were in a state sure. where they were really, but when they would come and work, we would work together. They would fall asleep on the table every time. Mm -hmm. And so getting the brain in a, in a, in a, in a healthy place and allowing the, uh, it to turn off the habitual signals, uh, so that it can drive all the systems in a more efficient and better way, um, is a, a component that, that right. we would look at and want to implement and so that you know and then obviously as we consult with each other and the person themselves uh to to see how things would go moving forward so i'm convinced that most of america is sleep deprived <laughs> I I don't know. Know. <laughs> Hello. This you know, when i search through all of my documents that i share with clients from a functional medicine standpoint it's it's really interesting that relaxation responses and sleep and sleep hygiene, I have more handouts on those two topics than I actually have on most nutrition related topics because I think they're just so, um, they're so overarching for, for every population, every yes. age. Sleep and food, if you eat junk right. food and you don't sleep well, you're it's like junk food for sleep. Right, right. Um, and then do you, uh, genetics and genetic testing and, and epigenetics. And um, I think that you do testing like micronutrient testing, like SpectraCell, and then probably some food intolerance testing to kind of um, make a targeted plan for your clients and use those tools in conjunction with genetic testing to kind of make a client profile to make an actual plan. Got it. And I think this is one of the big areas where I love to describe to people my background. I was working in a major cancer institute here in Houston for years, and we were a multidisciplinary 
approaching clinic, right? We approached everything from a multidisciplinary. And so that's just the way that my brain was trained early on. Um, and so in these moments where I'm like, oh yeah, I should start doing genetic testing too. I'm like, I have good people who do these things. And so I work side by side with a lot of physicians, a lot of other functional medicine practitioners who offer a ton um, of other resources that I don't have to. And in my mind, I'm like, why reinvent the wheel? Well, we can right. coordinate. Yeah, so to your point, I think combining all, some of the services that we provide with people who already have or can go get their mm -hmm. genetic testing. Um, the only genetic testing that I, I usually run on people is the MTHFR right. um, you know, mutation using spectra cell micronutrient test alongside that. That's helpful for me to know right. over you know, a nutrient picture. But we don't and do genetic testing, but it's helpful. It's really helpful for us to combine in our care for folks. That MTHFR test is really easy to add on to the spectra right. cells. So there's no reason why, if someone had has does not know, there's no reason why not to do that to find yeah, that out. Right. Absolutely. And then, as far as telemedicine, are you um, set up to where you can see clients telemedicine for you know not probably not all of it, but especially not neuromovement, but for a portion of it to get started and feel comfortable. It's really interesting. I'll let Brian speak to his part. Uh, <gasps> he said, well, like it's possible. I can't wait. <laughs> it's possible. Um, I was providing telemedicine long, oh, probably four or five years ago. I started doing sessions via um, a, a HIPAA compliant telemedicine platform. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with the state of things, you know, as of March of 2020, um, I am still seeing all of my clients two back to back days, 12 hours a day, all via telemedicine right now. Yeah. And you'd be really surprised with how effective I think it's been. I'm even working with two, um, actually three couples doing marriage and family therapy with these couples. Via yeah. telemedicine. So yes is the answer. And that will always be true. Even after things are COVID. done. Yeah. Yeah. COVID done when they slow down or, or yeah. return. Yeah. And Brian. Yeah. And so uh, one part of what we do is we have the uh, where I work hands on with somebody, which is called functional synthesis. And then transformative movement lessons are ones where I would verbally coach somebody and they would move themselves. And I would coach them through things of awareness and attention and these really subtle movements that we do to allow the brain to pick up on the information and make the, the changes. So. Um, yeah, with COVID and everything else, so we can we can do that uh, over video or or what have you. We have a lot of resources though too that have already been pre-recorded that can help to some degree in that. So mm -hmm. adults who are functional can can do that, or somebody who's old enough to be able to to follow the directions like that. Uh, since this has happened, uh, the institute that I've come out of, partner with, and train with started doing uh, something online where they're actually coaching like a caretaker for actually doing a hands-on. It's not a functional system. This is not what we do, but it's a kind of assisted movement um, lesson that can be beneficial still. Yeah. Um, and so that's going on as well. That's out there. If, if somebody needs that, that is available during this time until things kind of get back to a little bit more of a normal pace. Well, I looked at it. I like at that in a positive way because I think sometimes, you know, having that time to kind of ease into something um, yields better results. And so tackling some of like the nutrition and support and things like that and getting those together and starting the building blocks. And then they could either travel to come see you or if they're in Houston, where you guys are, then they can just come see you in your office. So that's wonderful to hear. Um, let's see. Oh, and we already talked that you do, you are able to speak with practitioners and then how you help clients stay on track with compliance, but you, um, you are four practitioners in one. So we know that you can give them counseling to stay on track and coaching. <laughs> and we're just giving, going through these because you have already answered a lot of these. Um, and then, okay, I wanted to make sure we, we had some good time to discuss these things. Um, who is your ideal client? And maybe some testimonials because that really helps people understand maybe what neuro movement is. And then, um, Oh, yes. And then the age range from infanthood to adulthood. So whatever testimonials that you think that you would like to share and you and that'll help explain what neuromovement is. Okay. 
Yeah, so testimonials and ideal clients. Ideal clients is kind of a funny thing because we deal with um, clients that are, you know, just post birth all the way to um, at the towards the end of life and anywhere in between whatever the conditions are. So the ideal client, uh, common ones would be people who come with injuries, people who have whether the injury is just like a physical injury or it's thought to be a uh, some kind of a brain injury or something like that. But it also goes from like our son who was, uh, you know, a, a congenital brain abnormality at birth all the way to uh, a CEO who's looking to just simply mentally perform better. Mm -hmm. And so it's all across the board or a professional athlete who's looking to shave some time. It can really be any of those things because the brain controls and drives all the systems. And so when you get it performing better, everything works better. And it seems kind of like a catch-all. Uh, but it, it it really is that very thing. When when you facilitate the conditions for neuroplasticity to have a beneficial effect in someone, it changes everything. Um, oftentimes what they're coming for, but also all kinds of other things that are unexpected, which is really fun. Right. Uh, really you never great. know what you're going to uncover. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. And that's that's why we take every individual different. And one of our nine essentials is flexible goals because we have the pur we have the purpose that they've come for but we are flexible within those goals because we also know that we, as we interact with their system and their system gives us the information of where to go next, all kinds of things change maybe before we get to the thing, which is why they're actually there. Um, it's, it's really an exciting thing. And it's one yeah. that they get to experience along the way as well. So uh, I don't, in that sense, I don't have an ideal client uh, because it's so broad reaching in its okay. effect. Everywhere from I, I trained in it for my son, but then I got such amazing benefits having long term pain myself that I was never able to get rid of. And now I am I'm without pain. And it was a very unexpected thing for me because I was only initially getting into it for him. And then obviously yeah. wanted to make it available for others. So um, a couple of testimonials, I guess, would be. Um, a litany of them online. If you look up our, our method and, and go online, you're just going to see all kinds of things. Uh, people who are told they I will make sure that I, I'll, make, I'll make sure that I link those and I can cut and paste and put those in the in the description below. Yeah, the ones so that get, are on your website, I'll do that. Cool. Yeah, Great. yeah, you get like the kind of like the big story ones, if you will. People who are told they'd never walk by mm -hmm. experts, and then they're walking. Yeah. Or, um, you know, I saw a, a young girl who was injured brachial plexus at birth and never moved her arm. I saw her start moving her arm in the first five minutes of a lesson with her parents there. Uh, and and then there's ones where I, you know, somebody comes to me with back pain, and in in three or four minutes they stand up and the back pain's gone. And it's just you know, so you get those kinds of things that are just really powerful, uh, powerful. Um, and rewarding. They just feel like, boom, you know. Um, oh, and The reader in the faithful. Oh, and then, again, you get all these secondary things. So I had somebody coming for developmental, cognitive developmental things. Right. And I didn't even know he played baseball. Uh, but he was uh, at the bottom of the batting order. Um Batting was challenging. He next, I saw him out one day. And he came running over and he told me, "I hit three out of four in the last game. I feel my pelvis coming through when I bat now. Like everything, and those are really great things because again, I didn't do some kind of a batting pelvis move thing on him. Uh, we were just looking to drive and upgrade his system, and only had this one goal in the back of our head for why he was coming. And then this baseball that he, I didn't even know he played. All of a sudden." Uh, he just improved dramatically. That, as a practitioner, um, that is so reward. I I don't consider I, I don't mean to say practitioner like for myself, but for you guys, that is an amazing reward because I talk to so many functional medicine practitioners, and sometimes they get burned out and they have to reinvent themselves because it is very um, trying. Because these people that are coming to them in functional medicine. Um, they have some layers that they need to peel to feel better and it can be a journey. And um, the reason why functional medicine practitioners do what you do usually is out of a personal health journey. So when you can see results like that, I mean, I'm just thinking what a blessing and how amazing that you get that reward. Right. You know, yeah. you get to actually see it and hear the testimonials. I mean, that you're making a difference, which is why you're doing this in the first place. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you know, it's even it's the support we're able to provide people without seeing the successes yet. You know, yeah. and from from a counseling lens, that's where it's it's such a unique way that we're able to come alongside families. There's a um, a, a dear couple that I'm working with that's their young parents they have three children um, and, and when I think about ideal clients these these two people just kind of embody everything that I think we want to be supporting um, the again I'm keeping everything confidential um, but the the husband um, have been recently diagnosed with a pretty um, pretty significant illness and so the toll and the trauma that that is taking both on his body right as yeah. he's doing with chronic pain and inability to eat and having all sorts of histamine flares and food intolerances but the then weightiness that that puts on to relationships and being a father and a husband and so he invited his wife into our sessions and through kind of starting with them working through functional medicine health coaching it really has taken more of a turn in me coordinating care of course with his functional medicine doctor mm -hmm. but providing more of the counseling services for them individually and as a couple and so we're meeting for marriage and therapy uh, marriage and family therapy mm -hmm. involving that aspect of it and that for me uh, really just paints this beautiful picture of we're, we're not through it yet right there's a lot right. of right. still happening but it is so rewarding to see people who feel understood right to feel that like yes. this is hard right this is hard you have three young children and two full-time working parents and just have someone to come alongside and say like i'm gonna get in the trenches with you we don't know when this is gonna be over but we're, we're but we're there yet. We're there, right? But what I think is amazing too is that I can't think of how many times, in, you know, us in our own family, but even some of the clients and people that I meet, they are exhausted. They've gone to one practitioner to another, not necessarily functional medicine, but just in the system trying to get a diagnosis. And then just they felt like a door is shut every time they go somewhere and then they have to go somewhere else and somewhere else. So the fact that you're able to um, attack something because that's what you're doing <laughs> you're full on um, creating a plan uh, is amazing and so what somebody might be coming in for one thing maybe they haven't heard of neuro movement before or they don't understand gut health and so you're able to kind of and as you get to know them and in the counseling standpoint unfold and really find out what their true needs are because as they're comfortable right right and, and they usually a lot of times they don't know what their needs are. They know that they just don't feel well. Very true, so. very true. Yeah. yeah. So um, how would someone schedule an appointment? And a lot of times I get the question of, do they accept insurance from any practitioner? So as far as from myself, when I get clients that come to me looking for a practitioner, um, I listen to their story. I do explain the whole beauty of functional medicine and getting to the root cause and long-term and um, savings and why um, investing in your health is important. So I preface my question with the fact that um, you really have to wrap your head around that first, but um, how would someone schedule an appointment? And then um, financially, I guess, what would they kind of be looking at? Not, not like price, I'm not talking about like structured pricing, but I guess to hear it from you guys to explain that um, there's not a one size fits all and right. right. Uh, it's gonna look a little different coming from two of us. So I'll speak to my piece and Brian can cover his. One of our hopes as we built our website was to be very mobile friendly. And so our, our hope is that when someone picks up their iPhone, that they're able to go to www.thecognizantgroup.com and you can scroll down and at any point when you scroll you will see schedule an appointment it's going to scroll with you and so you can click on that button um, you will be able to click there i think you have to provide your email address but once you submit that you'll be able to see our schedule and so you can go ahead and schedule yourself you can submit a questionnaire um, and everything will be done electronically so there's no paper forms to fill out all that can't stuff. lose them can't lose them and yep. it's hopefully easier for people to do you know sitting from their iphone right uh, while you're not driving um <laughs> my sessions will, will be pretty straightforward as far as when someone wants to schedule again that's all done electronically but um, they'll be able to see times during the week that we would come they would come and we would meet for 45 minute sessions brian's gonna look a little bit different mm -hmm. um before he explains that i'll say that we don't accept insurance 
Mm -hmm. um, but we can give all of the itemized coding, particularly for the counseling and nutrition piece. We can right. give all the diagnoses codes where people, generally speaking, can get a lot, if not all, of that reimbursed um, right. with the right diagnosis codes. And then that. labs, um, as far as some labs, I know that um, that particular lab has nothing to do with your practice, but that lab sometimes would accept insurance or right. um, provide a discount if they had insurance. So. Got it. And even most of the labs that I've worked with, um, after I provide the correct coding, um, mm -hmm. most clients have gotten at least half, if not more, of those labs reimbursed if we didn't run them through insurance. So right. definitely a big piece of it for us is making sure that First of all, we don't recommend everybody does all the testing up front. That's not my style. Um, right. And when appropriate testing is asked for or recommended, that we make sure we get the correct diagnosis codes. But Brian has a little bit of a different scheduling system because of how the method works. Uh, in terms of, yeah, in terms of frequency and things like that. So mine will, again, be dependent upon the individual, what their condition is and what, you know, what the needs are relative to why they're coming. Uh, ideally, often we work in what's called an intensive format. So someone might come to see me six times over three days and then not come again for three weeks. Uh, now, sometimes it's only a possible or relative to what they're coming for. It might be once or twice a week for a small period of time. It just really, really depends on the individual and what they're able to do and what the needs are. So obviously a person just post-stroke needs more intensive uh, lessons than somebody who's maybe coming just because of their shoulder surgery, they kind of plateaued on rehab or something like that. Right. Uh, very scenarios, yeah. Well, that's so interesting. I'm so excited and I'm going to study up and learn more. There's so much more to what you guys do. So I can create some links uh, from your website and I know that you have some resources on there already. Got it, you got it and um, just learn more. I was watching some information online so I could kind of get a little bit of an understanding. I think I could probably talk to you guys for hours because I'm so excited. Well, I will, I will say one of the best ways for people to really understand neuro movement, particularly if they're looking for neuro movement as a supportive method for their kids, and it was the first thing that I picked up and read before we ever got neuro movement lessons for our son, mm -hmm. um, is what's called uh, Kids Beyond Limits. Okay. Uh, not Kids Beyond Limits. It's on our website under resources. Okay. So you can go there. I saw that. Yeah, very I saw easy. It. Amazon. I think I read it in two days. You know, oh, good. Question yeah. mama. But I read that <laughs> in two days. But it's a helpful way of seeing how the method itself is both applied and some of the outcomes for different types of, um, this book focuses on kids, but obviously there's, there's more value. Yeah, yeah, there's really nothing in it that wouldn't right. translate into adults. Um, and there's even some things in there that you can actually do yourself to to feel and experience some things along the way. Um, and the chapters are real easy because they're broken up into essentially the nine essentials. So you get a chapter for each one and it's, it's, Yay. it's good. yeah. I will, I actually, I, I will read that. I do a lot on Audible and I do read too. So I will, um, I will get that. I'm excited. I, ha I do talk to quite a number of people, whether I meet them in the line at HEB or Whole Foods, or I mean, I just talk about health and wellness as much as I can. And there's a lot of people that are suffering. So I love sharing new therapies and new ideas. And right now I'm not living in a large city. And so one of my hopes is to reach people in remote areas. And I love that you have a teledistance option. And I meet people that say, I don't care, I'll drive anywhere. And so I think you having a teledistance option to start with for those people and then them being able to come in for appointments um, would be a great fit for them too. So I'm super excited. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing to support people like us too, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope so. But thank you so much. And um, I look forward to getting this online and sharing with people. So um and look forward to seeing how you grow and hearing more testimonials. So thanks so much, guys. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed meeting Danielle and Brian Mitchell of the Cognizant Group, hearing about their four areas of health that they provide. Don't worry, I'll have a description and links down below of ways to contact them, make an appointment, and then also contact me. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.